All right, so check this out. This is a little project I've been working on for a while. I'm building an Imperial Courier and realized I had an opportunity to test out another little interesting weapon from the tech broker, the human tech broker, Remote Release Flechette Launcher. This is a little oddity that's um, had a very mixed reception from among members of the community. It sits in an interesting place, as weapons that are available from the tech broker typically do. If you haven't seen my uh, shock cannon video, go uh, check that out. But I did a bunch of testing on that weapon and, and found it to be fun as one of the most unique uh, unique mechanics in the game. But ultimately, its ammunition um, its ammunition reserve was too small to really give it the endurance it needed to engage in some of the higher level activities in the game, including PvP. In my opinion, if you're going after shield tanks, shock cannons run out of ammo too fast. Unfortunately. Uh, as we'll see here, remote release flechette launchers suffer from a similar problem with ammo reserves. However, they do have this interesting mechanic. If, uh, for those who don't know, the flechette launcher is, I think, the only weapon in the game right now that will completely ignore target shields. As in, your target's shields literally have zero impact on the damage that this weapon puts out. It applies all of its DPS to the hull and to internals, but mostly uh, mostly to the, well, most of its damage goes directly to the modules with a little bit going into the hull, but this is the kind of weapon that you use to absolutely devastate your target's external modules, and I'll demonstrate that here in a second. But this is, on paper, the kind of weapon for pirates who want to disable a target without the risk of destroying it, which means, in theory, this could pair well with Kaido Scramblers, although since you're not worried about the shields at all anyway, it, it's almost kind of moot to run both, but um, Kaido Scramblers sit in the same category as Flechette Launchers do um, weapons intended for pirates to use to disable or attack ships without running an extreme risk of destroying them. But this means that they're useful for other interesting things too. Um, we're actually headed to a resource extraction site. I'm using a super cruise assist so that I can talk and fly at the same time. <coughs> but I also use it more often than you might think for other things, too. I actually like the flight assist. I'm glad I have to put these things in here. <coughs> they give me the ability to multitask more effectively. I can fly to Hutton Orbital while watching basically my favorite episode of Lord of the Rings favorite, I, I'm sorry, episode, my favorite Lord of the Rings movie. In case I didn't telegraph how much of a turbo nerd I am in the opening, let's find a good target in here. Python with a scary name, it's probably a pirate. pirate. Alright, so um, if you've ever used remote release flechette launchers, there is one other thing I should note. Unlike the shot cannon, uh, the flechette launcher is only available as a fixed or a turreted medium hardpoint. It's just like the AX uh, flak launcher, you, you basically are, are stuck using this one particular module size and the two particular module architectures. So uh, that limits the number of ships you can stick this on, which is kind of a bummer. And that puts the courier in a unique place as being a ship that can apply these weapons pretty well because you do need a lot of maneuverability to use them, and this guy's got too many people crawling up his butt, so I'm going to go find somebody else to pick on, like this guy. Oh, he's in a wing. Much as I'd like to, I don't think that's the best initial test here. I'll get too many people on me and I won't be able to concentrate on one target enough to be able to demonstrate this effectively. Just gotta roll with the punches. Let's see. Don't want to use a small ship necessarily. It looks like the instant seed isn't going to give me a lot of choices here, so... Nope, nope, maybe it will. An assault ship with a scary name. That's the way this t tends to work if you're new to the game. If a ship has a scary name, it's probably wanted. 
the name generator isn't all that original. You do have to be careful with Federal Assault Ships, though, because every once in a while they'll show up and they'll be mining and have uh, a clean record. Alright, let's start this party. Not quite. Alright, now I got it pissed. Side note with flechette launchers, um, targeting individual modules is kind of tricky. It's better just to target the hull because then you get a better indicator of what the shell's actually doing. I'll give you an example. If I target the cargo hatch, I stop getting feedback on whether or not... Uh, I stop getting feedback on when the best opportune moment to detonate the shells is going to be. You note that I just get the triangle red, triangle... whatever the shade of orange is they use in this game. But if I untarget and then retarget him so that I'm just aimed at the hull and then do this, you'll see that I get an indicator that scrolls up and an uh, audio tone that gives me an idea when I need to let up on the trigger. Targeting individual modules is also kind of pointless because you just don't have the fidelity to be able to aim like that when you're using this. You're basically just trying to get the thing to go off near the ship in question and letting things kind of pan out from there. You'll notice that he's not shooting at me as much. That's because I am wrecking his externals. The flechette launcher really does a number on them. And the Federal, like, all of the Federal piggies have their hardpoint placement such that if you can get this thing to go off in his face, you're basically doing damage to all the hardpoints. Which is nice. Because it means that even though I'm in a little ship with three mediums, um, I'm stripping him of his combat effectiveness by degrees with every shot fired. That's where this weapon really comes into its own. Because as a fight goes on, if the guy isn't smart enough to duck out, you're eventually going to start chipping away at his internals, and that's without even targeting them. Most weapons, if you don't sub-target a module, um, you're basically not going to do all that much damage to it. The other thing you'll notice is I don't have any pips in my weapons capacitor at all. I am optimized for maneuverability here, and... Even with only two pips in systems, he's not doing enough damage for me to be all that worried about it. Now he's basically not firing at all. Look at all the hole. You can see a lot of uh, damage on the hull. Those little cones, those aren't thrusters, those are leaks. I'm poking them full of holes. And I haven't even sub targeted anything yet. I'm not, I'm not even bother. His thrusters are down, it looks like. I'll just keep chipping away here. This quality right here, the ability to just rack internals without even really aiming at them, means that the flechette launcher has a lot of possibilities for trolling. It really does. You can mess with people using this weapon. I actually have seen 
I haven't seen it used. I've heard of it being used in some of the PvP tournaments. It's not very common. It's like one or two guys who use this weapon. But against shield tanks, it's definitely a good way to mess with people because as you can see here, um, his shields are still at full power. He's combat ineffective. And I can I just basically have carte blanche to do what I want to. Oh, there goes his shield generator. The only other way to do something like that in this game is with... Uh, what is it? Is it reverberating cascade or is it feedback cascade? I'm to keep the damn thing straight. But now that his shields are down, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. And finish him with the hammer. Oh. I got so used to not needing my weapons capacitor that I let it drain. Now, unfortunately, the flechette launcher um, shares, I mentioned when this started, a similar weakness to the shock cannon in that its ammunition reserve is, it just does not lend itself well to protracted engagement. So this is perfect if you're trying to assassinate somebody or trying to recover, for example, stolen cargo. Some of those missions uh, require you to be able to hatch break a target ship before you blow it up so that you can get a kidnap victim back and do other things problem is that piracy in this game is um, has been broken for a long time and FDev show no signs of ever really being able to address it. I can do a separate video about that, but um, as a weapon for piracy, it kind of helps if the loop that you're meant to use it in functions, and that's part of the reason why the flechette launcher hasn't taken off. That's why it remains an obscure but interesting tool that occasionally gets used for very specific purposes. Um, I think in an effort to balance it, FDev, well, it was an effort to try to encourage balancing was one of the reasons why FDev only made this available to medium hardpoints. You'll find this with, with uh, other power play weapons in general too, is that um, some of these weapons have really good gimmicks, like the Kaido Scrambler. I absolutely love it to death. I wish you could get it in hardpoints larger than the size ones, because it basically means that... Um, that small ships and a couple of medium ships are the only ones that can utilize the Kaido Scrambler to its best effect. Um, some of the other power play weapons, the Mining Lance, the they've got a whatever the beam laser is that overheats targets, the Retributor multi cannon. Those are all weapons that definitely, in my opinion, need more hard point options for applications because uh, by the time you start really, by the time most players start messing with power play in detail, they're they're off to bigger and better pastures and and have ships that are too good to really be able to use the most of the power play modules to their fullest effect. A couple of exceptions to that. The Pacifier Frag Cannon, which is a size 3. The Advanced Plasma Accelerator, also a size 3. The Hammer Imperial Railgun, which I have on this thing, even though it's a size 2 because it's a railgun and railguns are awesome. You, you'll see those used on a lot of platforms, where the other limited module size stuff usually just it comes with a gotcha that makes it very impractical. Anyway, uh, that's my introduction to flechette launchers. If any of you guys want me to try to test this on other ships, uh, comment about it below, and I'll see if I can get to it. Pretty, see if I can get to it. Uh, that's all I got for today. I'll catch you guys later.